having the locker. So the steps we break it down into are exactly the same as kicking from hand. The first thing we always look at is our ball drop. So when we're dropping the ball, we need to be dropping the ball upright. And our ball needs to bounce straight back up, so we want the ball bouncing directly on its nose. Okay, so from there, we're going to be getting into a practice position where we're going to be able to drop that ball and it's going to bounce straight up. And for us to get some consistency with that, we're going to drop the ball as low as we can. Okay, so our arms are nice and extended down towards us. We don't want the ball too close. We're about 45 degrees, which gives us a nice ball drop position where we can control the ball down and it bounces straight back up. So this is possibly the hardest element of the job team is getting our ball drop right and to get that ball consistently bouncing upright. The next aspect to our drop kick is having a strong pillar. So with all our kicking, the pillar involves our stance leg, our hip, our trunk, our chest and our head. So this needs to be a strong position. We don't want a collapsed position like so. Okay, we'll be nice and upright, nose over toes and head and chest in, our, in a strong position over the ball there. Okay, and if we've got that position, that's where we could we could face a strong kick from there. And that's where we're bringing in our leg swing, which is our third stage of our kicking process. So our leg swing in the drop kick stays exactly the same as in all our other variants. The only difference is the timing. So with this, instead of kicking, dropping the ball and kicking it straight away, we're going to need to, to allow the ball to drop, bounce on the floor and bounce up a small fraction. Okay, so we want to be contacting the ball just after it's hit the floor. If we manage that, we're going to get a successful drop kick. So the main thing to consider, again, with our leg swing, just a couple of reminders, is make sure we're getting a J-shaped swing. So we're starting behind us to really open up our hip and get that power through. But then also we're finishing with our leg and our foot towards the target. As well with that, we need to make sure that our pillar is finishing towards the target, not only our leg and foot. So we're getting there and our hips and our shoulders are square towards our target. That brings me into the fourth element, which is our follow through. So with our drop kick, again, really important that all our momentum is heading towards our target. So there are a couple of common mistakes when executing our drop kick. So the first revolves around our balance. If we're not balanced and if we're coming around the kick, that's when we're going to be unsuccessful. We've got to really ensure that our, we are, we're balanced and all our momentum is going through the kick uh, to be able to complete a successful kick. The second most common error for me is the ball drop. If we don't get the ball drop bouncing directly upright, we're not going to get a good connection on the ball. And we need that good connection to get the accuracy that we need. So there we have it, the four stages of a drop kick. And you now know what you need to be looking for when you're executing.